Hello students, welcome to the first chapter of physics which we are going to study in the 10th standard that is chapter 10, light reflection and refraction. Till now you studied some chapters of chemistry and biology. Now we are starting with physics. This chapter is a part of ray optics of physics and in this chapter we are going to study in detail two phenomena which are related to light that is reflection and refraction. So, we can say that this chapter is basically divided into two parts. In the first part we will study in detail reflection of light and in second part we will study in detail refraction of light. This chapter basically deals with light. So, first of all let us study the nature of light. First one. Light is an electromagnetic radiation which produces sensation in our eyes. Many types of radiations are coming from sun towards the earth. But this electromagnetic radiations are the radiations which are able to create sensation in our eyes means which we are able to see and we call it as light. It is a non-mechanical wave. Now students you have studied the types of waves in 9th standard and in that you studied mechanical and non-mechanical wave. So, you know what is non-mechanical wave? It is a wave which does not require medium for its propagation. So, light does not require medium for its propagation and therefore, it is a non-mechanical wave. Next property is light travels with maximum speed in air. When it is traveling in air, it is traveling with maximum speed and it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. But when it enters in any other medium, its speed decreases depending upon the type of medium. So, this you have to keep in mind that it is traveling with maximum speed in air and it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Next is light travels in a straight path joining one point to another point and this straight path joining one point to another point in the direction of propagation of light is known as ray of light and group of such rays of light is known as beam of light. So, what we are seeing is a beam of light. When light rays are incident on any medium, either they are reflected or refracted and partially absorbed. And in this chapter, we are going to study in detail both this reflection and refraction. So, let us revise first of all all the points related to nature of light. First of all, it is an electromagnetic radiation that produces sensation in our eyes. It is non-mechanical wave, it travels with maximum speed in air which is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Straight line path joining one point to another in the direction of propagation of light is called ray of light and group of such rays of light is known as beam of light. When light is incident on any medium, it is either reflected or refracted and partially absorbed. So, this is nature of light. So, now we are starting with the first part of the chapter that is reflection of light. You have studied reflection in lower standard, right? It is the phenomenon of returning back of light from the surface when it is incident on any surface. So, when light is incident on any surface, it is returned back by the surface and this phenomenon is called reflection of light. When the light falls on highly polished surface like mirror, most of the light is sent back into the same medium and this process is called reflection of light. You have studied laws of reflection also in lower classes. Let us recall those laws of reflection. First of all, angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So, what is angle of incidence? The angle made by incident ray with the normal is called angle of incidence and what is angle of reflection? The angle made by reflected ray with the normal is called angle of reflection and according to the law of reflection, angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection. The second law is the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal to the mirror at the point of incidence all lie in a same plane. You can be asked in for two mark question, define reflection of light and state the laws of reflection of light. Then you have to write this much. So, students now you know what is reflection of light. Now, we are going to study about mirror through which reflection of light takes place. First of all, what is a mirror? Mirror is a shiny polished object which reflects most of the rays of light falling upon it. 
one side of mirror is polished with su suitable material to make the other side reflective. Now first of all let us see the types of mirrors, two types of mirrors are there plane mirror and spherical mirror. A plane mirror is a mirror having a flat surface and mirrors having called reflecting surfaces are called spherical mirrors. A spherical mirror is a sp part of a sphere. We are going to study about the spherical mirrors in detail in this lecture. Now let us see the types of image formed by mirrors. First of all, what is an image? An image is the appearance of the object as reflected by the mirror. Images are of two types, real image and virtual image. If the rays after reflection from mirror actually meet at a point, then real image is formed. But if the rays after reflection from mirror does not meet actually at a point, but appears to meet when they are extended backward, then virtual image is formed. So, real image is the image which is formed in front of mirror and it can be obtained on screen. Whereas, virtual image is the image which is formed behind the mirror and cannot be obtained on screen. So, this was about mirrors, its types and images formed by mirror. Now we are going to study spherical mirrors in detail. First of all, what is a spherical mirror? A spherical mirror is a curved mirror formed by a part of hollow glass sphere with a reflecting surface. These spherical mirrors are of two types, concave mirror and convex mirror. A concave mirror is a curved mirror whose inner surface is reflecting or in other words you can say that a concave mirror is a curved mirror with the reflecting surface on the hollow side. Whereas, convex mirror is a mirror whose reflecting surface is outward or you can say that a convex mirror is a curved mirror with the reflecting surface on the outer side. Here you can see the diagrams of concave and convex mirror and it is clearly visible over here that a concave mirror is having reflecting surface towards the inner side and convex mirror is having reflecting surface on the outer side. Now we will see different terms related to spherical mirrors. First one is pole of a mirror. The center of reflecting surface of mirror is called pole of mirror and it is denoted by P. Here in the diagram you can see the pole of concave mirror and convex mirror. It, you can see that it is exactly at the center of reflecting surface of mirror. Now students we know that spherical mirrors are curved. So if we complete the curve we can see that an imaginary circle is formed as shown in figure. Now this imaginary circle can be considered as a hollow sphere from which the mirror is made and the center of this hollow sphere from which mirror is made is called center of curvature of mirror. Here you can see that it is denoted by point C. And the radius of this hollow spherical shell from which mirror is made is called radius of curvature of mirror or it can be called as the distance between the pole of mirror and center of curvature is called radius of curvature of mirror. Next is principal axis. It is an imaginary line passing through pole and center of curvature. Here you can see in the diagram principal axis is marked over here. It is an imaginary line which is passing through pole and center of curvature. Next is principal focus. When the rays which are parallel to principal axis are reflected from mirror, then either they intersect at a point or appear to intersect at a point then this point is called principal focus. Here you can see that for concave mirror the rays are actually meeting at a point after reflection from concave mirror and this point is denoted by capital F which is principal focus and in the second diagram you can see that the rays are not meeting but they appear to meet at point which is denoted by F which is principal focus of convex mirror. So again what is principal focus? When rays parallel to principal axis after reflection from mirror actually meet or appear to meet at a point and this point is called principal focus of mirror. 
Next is focal length, it is the distance between the pole and principal focus of the mirror is called focal length and it is denoted by small f. Here you can see in the diagram distance between p and f is denoted by small f which is called focal length. Now students here you have to keep in mind that this focal length is always half of the radius of curvature that is f is equal to r by 2 where f is focal length and r is radius of curvature. Now let us recall the terms related to spherical mirror, first is pole, the center of reflecting surface of mirror is called pole of mirror, it is denoted by capital P, second center of curvature, the center of hollow sphere from which mirror is made is called center of curvature, it is denoted by C, third radius of curvature, the radius of hollow sphere from which mirror is made is called radius of curvature, it is denoted by r or you can say that it is the distance between pole and center of curvature. Next is principal axis, an imaginary line passing through pole and center of curvature is called principal axis. Principal focus, a point on principal axis where rays parallel to principal axis actually meet or appear to meet is called principal focus, it is denoted by capital F. Last one focal length, the distance between pole and principal focus is called focal length, it is denoted by small f. So students in this lecture we studied nature of light, mirror, types of mirrors and terms related to spherical mirrors. We will continue with other topics in the next lecture.